Yeah, well, I've got one maggot in here, so... Um, Worth doing. The um, thing that broke, the thing that went... Where well, clunk. It's the soft bits. It's the soft, the soft squidgy bits. Yeah. In other words, me. The first rule of consultancy is if things are going wrong, do something different. It's a lovely day to go sailing, isn't it? Yeah, but unfortunately, uh, we've got ourselves all ready for it, haven't we, Beverly? With, and with the boat all prepped. Um, but unfortunately, we've had to put the sails away and everything. And now we've unprepped the boat. Yeah, everything's put back. So, what you may say has been the huge cause. What went wrong? Did the engine seize up? No. Nope. Did the sails fall off? No. Nope. Did the rigging wreck itself? No. Nope. No. Nope. The um, thing that broke, the thing that went where well, clunk. clunk. It's the soft bits. It's the soft, the soft squidgy bits. Yeah. In other words, me. The crow. The crow. And what was wrong with me, you may ask. Um, I've been working a lot lately. I've been running around looking after my mum a lot lately. I've been doing other things. I think I've just had enough. The main thing is, at the end of the day, Beverly is under a lot of stress. And I'm afraid to say it's the type of stress which is really bad for you. There's two types of stress in life. Uh, positive stress. stress. You can do something about it. Negative stress, on the other hand, just happens to you and there's bugger all you can do about it. You can't change the outcome. You can't do anything, can you, Beverly? Nope. I can't, and I can't make my mum better. No. And um, you can't make her magically have a different outcome on life or anything like that. So what's all this got to do with sailing, you might say? Well, as Gaynor put it today, she reminded me of an old flying saying of mine, which is, if your head's not in the cockpit, you shouldn't be in the aircraft. And once we had the boat all prepped, she just took one look at me and said, your head's not in the cockpit. It isn't. It really wasn't. I could just see by looking at her that, um, I don't know where her head was, but it certainly was not where it needed to be. Stuff with a cotton wool, I think. So it, it comes there. Uh, uh, another old flying thing, which I know is also a sailing thing, which is push on itis or get there itis. Mm. You know, where you think to yourself, well, look, I've got to go. No, you don't. I mean, some people look at it and say, look at a day like this. We haven't been out sailing for a, a, a while. We've got to go. We've got to go. We've got to use a day like this. No, you don't. The other thing okay. is, like. Hang on a second. Go on. There will be another day. There will. This is not the last one. No, it's not. But the other thing is that I was hoping is that, um, because I do find sailing very therapeutic, I think that a lot of your stresses and your land-based stresses can be removed when you go sailing, purely because you've only got what's in front of you to deal with. There's also something therapeutic about the sea. It's good for you. It's good for your mental health. But the issue I had to a certain extent is getting the boat out to sea. Yes, um, because Beverly's head was not in the cockpit, as we say. And we're in a tight slip with winds. Uh, I had got my plan because I was going to take us out again because basically I'd cocked up last week. So I wanted to take us out because at the end of the day, I believe that you've got to get back on the horse. You know, if you have an issue, you've got to sort of like overcome that issue and but get back on the horse. You know, so that's why I was going to take us out. But regardless, it's still a two-person job. There's still two of us. And if I mucked it up again, I needed Beverly to be there to get me out of trouble again. No, if we were at anchor or something like that, we'd have gone. Yes, because... If we'd have been the mirroring boy, we'd have gone. Because, to be honest, the most dangerous place to be in a boat is in a marina. Giving yourself time and acknowledging. Because the one thing that people fail to do is say that there's a problem. They think that by keeping it all inside and keeping it all to yourself mm -hmm. is, you know, they're not going to burden anybody with it or something like that. I think the hardest, thing, the hardest thing that I find with people who've got any sort of mental health issues is don't be ashamed to share it. 
Basically, yes. Too many people are ashamed to share it. It's like it's a failure of some sort. It's not. It's like stubbing your toe, except you've stubbed your head in some way. You know, yeah. don't, don't be afraid to bring it up. Don't be afraid to say, this is not my day. I am, my, my, my mind is going for a wander and I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for it to come back. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> you know it's, it's just one of those things. You've done the mental equivalent of stubbing your toe or breaking your ankle. Give yourself time. It'll get better. And if it doesn't get better, there's plenty of doctors and shrinks and psychologists. Trust me, I know all about them. You do. I do. But um, Which is why I don't give a monkeys about talking about it. I'm done with that. You know, I'm done with being frightened about it. And I am. You are. I had, I had mental health issues. They were sorted out as best they can be. I mean, don't get it wrong. I'm laughing and joking all the rest of it. The, 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 the black cloud of whatever it is is still at the back of my head. But it is, it is dissipating. I'll, I'll, I'll be all right by tomorrow. Yeah. And um, I think that's brilliant. You know, because, like I say, you're taking those first steps. Acknowledgement and talking about it. Because when Beverly was going through the um, uh, mental problems, one of the things they talked about is denial. So obviously she's not denying it anymore. Diversion. That was one of the Ds, wasn't it? Um, what was the other one? The three Ds were denial, distraction and diversion. Yeah. Oh, you did loads of distraction. Yeah. You would do anything. Rather than think about it. Rather than think about it. So, you know... So you know, you distract yourself doing other thing, you divert other people away from your problems and then you deny that there is a problem. Oh, I've had those. Yeah. I remember going to my sister's wedding and I definitely had a problem. So what did I do? I did a photo album. So I was talking to everybody under the sun, getting photographs and getting signatures and little things just so it was a memento of the wedding. But I know why I did that. It's because I didn't want anybody to talk to me. I was having issues that day. But the thing is, because I was being proactive, it was just... Nobody noticed. <laughs> or at least I hope not! <laughs> yep, so we're going to leave it there for the moment and we will um, catch up with you in a bit. So, yeah, that's it. What's going on, Mrs Mops? Well, the first rule of consultancy is if things are going wrong, do something different. And um, obviously, we've had a little bit of a crisis, so we're doing something different. We're uh, pulling up floorboards. One of the reasons um, from our consulting days that we used to say, if something isn't working, do something different, is if something isn't working, it isn't working. If you keep doing it, it still won't work. Whatever you do might be different. It might work either but at least it has a chance of working. So doing anything is probably more productive than just repeating the same faults over and over again and getting nowhere. Just do something different. It changed your mood, it'll maybe get things done. Generally, when we were in business consultancy, we called it jiggling. You know, take the whole system, give it a little jiggle, give it a little shake, make it do something it doesn't want to do. The results were usually positive, so that's my recommendation. At the minute what I've got to do is dig through this, get all the bits out, and then let's rip the floor up time, which is definitely not sailing, but it's definitely not sort of falling apart either, so let's do that. Got you. <sighs> Lift a bit more. Right, okay. Hopefully you can I've get... got it, I'm holding it now. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, God, it's filthy. We know it's filthy, that's why we're cleaning it. Yeah, well, I've got one maggot in here, so... Um, it's worth doing. It's worth doing for that maggot. Okay. Okay, I'm at the back. Thanks for that. It would have been nice if you said something like, Bev, there's maggoty bits up there. I did mention a maggot. I yeah, but I come on, look, I've got plenty of choices to where it could be. <laughs> yeah. I said I saw a maggot. Is that him? Okay.
See, there's a lot of stuff that's come out from the edge of the floorboard. This was all wedged up against the edge and I've scraped it off. Now, there's a fair bit that these haven't been up in several years. They certainly haven't been up since we bought the boat. They may never have been up. This might be their first time. I don't know. There's a little bit of damp damage in one corner, but nothing significant. I'm not worried about it. It'll dry out. I think it'll be absolutely okay. But all this stuff here, obviously, is dust and whatnots and cooking fragments and things that we've dropped and there's all sorts of things in here. So don't miss your opportunity. We are now selling Salty Dass Swarf on our website for 999 999.99. For one million dollars a packet this can be yours. <sighs> okay what unintended consequence of our actions have we run into? Well I was hoping uh, to remove this floorboard uh, just to complete the job really but I've realised that we've put the floorboard, sorry, the bookcase on top of it and um, although we did organise um, the one in the middle so that it could still be removed well, obviously we haven't done it for uh, <coughs> the one I'm standing on so I've got to still finish off cleaning this and um, <sighs> The only thing I can say is this distraction has definitely worked because Daft Bevy is back again saying that, um, you know, million pound for our stuff and... Um, trying to raise money for sailing. I know, but you know what I mean? Daft Bevy is back. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, this distraction has worked. Okay, I'm clear. Oh. Right, okay. Jobs are good. Well, it's been a few days since I had my meltdown. And um, I'm glad to report that I'm over it, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> the big news from around here is that we've moved the boat. And as you can see, we have moved it a few metres closer to the toilet block. Um, it's a psychological move. We're psychologically closer to the toilet block. This is the same finger pontoon. We used to get off there and stand on this, now we get off there and stand on this. So physically, we've got to walk the same distance. But you take these victories and you do what you can with them. So it's back to boat tasks. And we put on the storm lines just because we're in Northern Ireland. <laughs> we got Irish weather. Got to get water into the tanks because we've used a lot of over the last few days. But um, this is a nicer slip for us. It's much wider. That, that one there was quite narrow. And as you saw in last week's video, um, getting in and out was a bit of an event. <laughs> this one here, we've got stacks of room. So we're, fe we're feeling a lot happier about this particular one. <sighs> but I guess it's just carry on as normal. There's an event on this weekend and we're hoping to be able to go to it. And if we do, we'll take you along with us. And because um, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. But I thought we should wrap up by just saying, as far as we can tell, things are back to normal. Fingers crossed.